All right, is everybody set and have sound? Does anybody need me to go through and introduce and spell my name, or is everybody? Okay, sure. It's uh, Commander Ron Saunier, S-A-U-N-I-E-R, of the Major Crimes Division. All right, I want to thank everybody for uh, showing up for the press conference. Wanted to uh, get out with some information, reference the uh, sh shooting that occurred at the National Western Stock Show at the motorcycle swap meet that occurred on Saturday, uh, shortly afternoon, about 1248. Uh, we began getting phone calls. We had some off-duty officers even working there, along with some uh, plainclothes detectives uh, that started reporting that they had a shooting at the event. And uh, we started our investigation on it, uh, continued that investigation into the early hours of the morning. Uh, we still are very active in this investigation, still bringing witnesses down, still trying to gather other witnesses that are out there. So first thing I'm gonna do is if anybody was there and is witness to this, has any video or any information about this, I would encourage you to come forward to the Denver Police Department and uh, get us that information. Uh, like I said, this is still a very active investigation that is going on. Uh, we did have multiple parties uh, that were shot that day. We have three that were pretty critically shot, one that was pronounced. Uh, one of the shooting victims was a minor, not that any shooting is minor, but a gra graze wound. Uh, we still do have some victims over at the hospital uh, that are still trying to recover. Detectives responded down Sunday. We're able to get some more information from some of those victims that were at the hospital and uh, continued on. It appears that this event started as a verbal altercation down in an area at the bottom of the stairs that quickly escalated into a physical assault or physical altercation where ultimately <clears throat> Uh, gunfire occurred. We believe that there was multiple parties that uh, discharged their weapon during this time. Like I said, we had at least four parties that were struck during that. Uh, like I said, I would encourage if anybody has video evidence, uh, phones, pictures and stuff, we've had some stuff trickling into us uh, just before I came down here, so I would encourage people to come forward with that. Uh, we did have, uh, like I said, the witnesses in this. I'm not going to go in and identify or confirm any of uh, the victims slash witnesses, uh, persons of interest in this, as this is currently still a ongoing investigation that, that is out there. And uh, based on the nature of the crime, I think it's diligent for us to make sure that we are taking care of our witnesses and stuff. So. Multiple people discharge their weapon. Is is there more than one weapon involved? We believe that there is more than one weapon involved, yes. Based on the evidence that we've recovered, we, have, uh, we know that there was more than one weapon or one firearm used in this incident. I take it that uh, there haven't been any arrests, or you would have mentioned that. Right. But, uh, at, why haven't there been any arrests? At this point, we are still continuing to go through the investigation. We're trying to talk to all parties involved. We're consulting with the district attorney's office. They responded out. Uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into these particular cases that are there. So we're continuing to uh, work. We're continuing. We have witnesses scheduled to come in throughout the day today. Uh, we may have other unidentified witnesses out there. So we're, we need to look at a complete package. For us to make an arrest, we have to do develop probable cause. We have to eliminate some of the affirmative defenses and stuff that may be out there. And uh, it's going to be a complete investigation that will be turned over to the district attorney who will make the ultimate decision whether uh, charges will be accepted or filed in this case. What was the verbal altercation? Uh, you know, uh, based on, it just sounds like it was more of a territorial type uh, verbal altercation that started. I don't know if any of you were at the scene prior to this, but they had territories kind of set up with some of the motorcycle gangs. Uh, that were out there that had certain areas and this appears at least based on the the half that are talking to us that you know it started based on that altercation that turned physical pretty quick which half is that right that's you know I don't we're not going in I know the names are out there but uh, we do have one of the groups that has been you know down here talking to us and 
one of the other outlaw gangs or groups uh, has, you know, we've only had one of their parties come forward. So, and I, sir, without naming them, then would the the group that is talking to you would they be the club that is made up of law enforcement that is widely reported? Well, you guys are widely reporting that the, you have a club that's made up of law enforcement. Uh, I will tell you. Uh, it's not a secret that's out there. We did have one party that was with that group who was a Department of Correction employee. And I don't want to go into identifying anybody related to this at this point. But uh, from all the indications of everybody else that we talked to, he is the only one that was an active uh, law enforcement or Department of Corrections employee. There were no other ones that came forward and talked to us that day that had any current active law enforcement with them. So that's one of the things I wanted to clarify. I know there's a lot of information that this is a law enforcement club and such, but the, the group that was down here that we've talked to, that we've identified that are willing to you know come back, uh, do not show, at least have not identified to us that they have law enforcement ties or connections. I do know when you do, you know, some research, which I'm sure you've done, there have been some incidents with this club out there where there have been certain law enforcement members that have joined this club. What but about it, past law enforcement experience? Have you seen that in the people you've talked to? Uh, there, one of the individuals, I believe, may have some past, what at least what I was told. I, we haven't done complete, thorough background checks and, you know, may come out more. But of the names that we had and who we have talked to, we did have one indication that, you know, he, and it's been a while since he was involved in law enforcement. So then the, is the person you interested? follow up on the gang, uh, the non-naming of the clubs. So would it then be surprising to you that the other half that's involved where the, the victim was a part of that club, is it surprising to you that they're not talking to you based on I, their reputation if we do any basic? I, I mean, past history that they've had in other incidents, you know, within the city and county of Denver, within, you know, the United States, a lot of times you do have a hesitancy for people to come forward with information. I will tell you that we are working, we are reaching out to the attorneys that have been out there and trying to elicit all the cooperation that we can. And, you know, add to do a complete and thorough investigation would require that we talk to all parties involved in this situation. And I'm not saying that we haven't talked, you know, we've had some cooperation on that end. We ultimately need more cooperation. Would you say it's limited? Yeah, it's, it's limited cooperation at this time. Can you elaborate on the other incidents that you said that uh, Denver Police Department has been involved in with that other group? I, I've just, talking from my 30 years experience, that when you generally come across that, their comments, generally I have nothing to say to you. So. I'm not going to go into some of those specifics going back 30 years. Is the person of interest still a person of interest? Everybody, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we still have a lot of investigating to do. We have a lot of statements to go. We have to, you know, determine we've got evidence that we're going to need to process and everything else. So, yes, this is still a very active and ongoing investigation. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot that's got to be determined you know exactly what's there we've got to look at physical evidence we have to you know continue to talk to the witnesses that we have involved in terms of you mentioned an affirmative defense and i'm assuming that that could be that there was a fight going on at what point do i get to pull out my gun and shoot somebody versus no. running and getting security yeah i i don't want to go into speculation but you know there is a self-defense statute that is on the books that you can talk to any district attorney about, uh, take take look at it to see exactly what it says. You know, it, it all comes down to what, you know, a person is going to choose, whether they, they turn and walk away, go get security, whether they do that. So I don't want to speculate and definitely don't want to get into it related to this case itself. Because the yes. couple things, were, were guns allowed in this facility and how were these territories set up by who? I don't know that there was any official territories set up and by who. I can tell you that as I responded there, uh, there were areas set up that were, you know, being occupied by various, you know, groups. And whether that was set up by the organizer, you would have to get with them, or whether it's they came in and unofficially occupied an area based on the numbers that they had, it's hard to say. And the guns, uh, were they permitted? 
Uh, I did not see anything that said that there weren't guns allowed at the event, but I did not work the event prior. I showed up after this happened and honestly did not take a whole lot of time checking to see you know what happened I immediately went in towards where the crime scene was and you know began my investigation with my detectives at that time so I'm going to follow up on the territory question from Rick though if if there are official territories set up I, then why would there be a dispute so would it be fair to say that there was a they couldn't agree I would I would guess that there was not official territory set up I'm knowing how things go that there would be an unofficial area that say a motorcycle club or gang or whatever would decide that this is the area that we're occupying uh, you would have to get with the promoters to see if they purchased tables or areas and maybe the promoter did something to set something up but based on my current investigation and that's talking to a lot of people uh, looking at whatever evidence that we have there was areas within that area where it was just highly occupied by different groups. But typically in the past of this event, it's my understanding that the groups have tended to respect each other's space. I mean, we haven't had really big problems like this before. Do you have any information that one group maybe sort of deliberately infringed on the other group's space or accidental, or do you know? I don't have any indication that there was any intentional at this point, and that's just based on what we have so far. So what would be your recommendation well, for holding this show next year? Uh, that's not part of my investigation or something that I would even get into on that one. So. Two questions. Is, this a, is the Department of Corrections employee a sworn police officer? Or those, does he have those duties? From my understanding, he is his certified as far as a peace officer is only applicable at the facility that he works. He is not a sworn peace officer that carries a gun in his official capacity or any of that. In general terms, under the law, not necessarily for this incident, does that person have a higher responsibility to for self-defense or defense of others in a situation like this? No, I don't believe so. I think as it comes down to even peace officers, you know, it's self-defense or defense of others. So in this particular case, I can tell you throughout this investigation, there is absolutely no indication that he was taking any action related to his employment. Were the chapters involved in this from the two, were they Colorado chapters or were they from another out of state? Uh, from, I'd, yes, would be the answer. Out of state? <laughs> no, from both Colorado and out okay. of state. So. Can you tell us why uh, plain clothes detectives from the Denver Police Department were there? Uh, we monitored the event. I don't want to go into the operations or the security about that, but there was uh, a contingent of officers that were there beyond just the Denver Police Department, but they were not related to this event or involved in this incident other than being good witnesses. Okay, but they were not, just to clarify, they were not working off-duty as security. They were doing... I, I don't know what this off-duty security, we did have uniformed off-duty there. I do not know if there was a contingent that was plain clothes. I do know that we did have on-duty plain clothes detectives within or undercover detectives in the area. Can you there was say no whether the corrections officer was the one who fired the fatal shot and, uh, and or who, do you know who fired the fatal shot? At this point, we don't. That's part of the evidence and processing and everything that we're going to have to do. I, I mean... So that's going to come down to, you know, evidence processing and everything else. Were, were weapons confiscated, especially were any guns confiscated and might the ballistics then identify which gun? We, we recovered guns that we have placed that hopefully will give us that evidence, I, you know. So that's part of the physical evidence that we still need to process going forward. I don't want to go into the details, but yes, we will be processing. That's part of what we're going to be, you know, moving forward with the crime lab across the way. I don't want to go into the detail of the number. It's multiple guns were recovered. Were more than eight people involved in this whole fight than the, than the eight that ended up, you know, coroner's office, the hospital? Yes, we had multiple. We, we had a very large group based on evidence that's there, uh, you know, so yes, there was more than the, well, as far as injuries, you know, what we know of from, you know, we had uh, 
sh under 20 of one group and I am being told by witnesses and everything that you know the one group had 70 80 people there how many of those participated you know I, I can't tell you Is there tension growing between the two groups that you guys are currently investigating over the past years in Denver or just overall or this is something that just happened when you put two groups like this in one we have no indication at this time based on what we have that there has been but that being said we still have multiple parties to invest or to interview and move forward but there's no indication at this point you know that there was a previous big deal like you know from Waco or from one of these other deals these these two groups I think you know came together in, the, in this particular area and it started verbal and quickly escalated Rick, and stabbings too not just gun yes sir. we did have one party that was stabbed multiple times that was transported to the hospital and just making sure there was, no, there was no magnetometers or screening at the doors or anything like that i did not i couldn't tell you because there was none at the door i came through so i you know i can't tell you if, if i came through a, a normal door or anything but I know there was multiple weapons there, so I would assume that there probably wasn't that type of security or screening. No surveillance the, video from inside? We don't have any surveillance from inside. We have obtained, and that's why I would highly encourage if anybody is out there, uh, everybody and their brother has cell phones nowadays, and we've recovered some of that. We, we do have some that we're looking at, and we would encourage if someone has information to bring us forward. Thank you, sir. Can you ballpark how many witnesses you have? Dozens, hundreds, thousands? Did you have to go through? We still, you know, we still have a lot of witnesses that we're lining up to come down. We had some that came down and uh, chose to delay giving a statement. We're in the process of working through and scheduling those as we go. I can tell you as soon as I walk down here, there's been additional witnesses that are coming forward. So I can't give you a hard number, but you know, it's it's more than your dozen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner, okay. very much.